And then when you get a voice that fits it so perfectly, the subject matter, like a Graham Mack, you got it. <laughs> You're stuck. You're stuck with goodness. We all overthink. It's a natural reoccurring mental thought process that will continue as long as the brain is alive. Overthinking in and of itself cannot and will not kill you. Brian Scott Parker, how are you? How are you, Graham? Nice to meet you. And you too, you know, we worked on this book together and this is the first time we've ever had the chance to, to see and hear each other. Up until then, it was just messages but in text it wasn't even phone calls right so you good. know I, I was really amazed at the let's say the communication that we shared to be so precise and and and, and, and punctual and 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 it the whole process went went by in a, in a flash really All because of you yes well it doesn't hurt to have a well-written book you know what i'm saying <laughs> um <laughs> No, it it is it is a lovely book and and so well written and uh, and really I think the only back and forth we had were were mistakes I made, weren't they? And uh, you well, just they, mm. I, I don't know if they were really mistakes, other than the fact that um, they were just little spots or nuances yeah. that had to be smoothed and smoothed out, and you did that so effortlessly, and it came out more than I could imagine. Oh, that's great! I'm glad you're pleased with it because I always yes, do that. I do it. I do it in sections, and and then we we uh, we change it. To, uh, you, you listen to it, and sometimes you might go, oh, "Can you change that?" I go, "Cool, of course." So that, that, that's how right. it works. It has to be exactly how you want it because right. you've got to be proud of it. Because with right. any luck, this thing, the audio book, we don't know with audio books at the moment because they're still quite new. But we, I hope the audio book lasts as long as the, the print and the, the, the e-books do in history and I, is here long after yes. we've gone to help I, people way into the future. I think they will. The technology in and of itself and the ease of it uh, to, to, to get acclimated to using it, I think, is, is forthcoming. It's yeah. just a matter of time, I yeah. think, that, because it will get so absorbed. The people that I've talked with, when I mentioned it to them, those who haven't tried it said, Wow, I think that I think I'll try it because it's easier than reading. Yeah, it is, and you and you then, can multitask. And then, and then and then when you get a voice that fits it so perfectly, the <laughs> subject matter like a Graham Mac, you got it. <laughs> You're stuck. You're stuck with goodness. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's really kind of you. It's an honor for me that you chose me first of all to, to narrate your work. But also to work with you on on such an what could be a life changing book for a lot of people. Yes, I, I, yes. I'd like to I'd like to go back in time because in the about the author section, um, I, I found out that at school a teacher asked you what you'd like to be yes. when you grow up, and you yes. gave the best answer. What age were you when you were asked this question? I had to be around six or seven years old. And yeah. I remember it. That's the ironic thing about it all to me that I remembered it all these years. I won't tell you how old I am, but I'm pretty old. <laughs> and when she asked me, it's like I even to this day, I can feel the way I answered her was totally spiritual. OK. And the question totally. was, what would you like to be when you grow up? And your answer was? I want to help everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Now, through yeah. the years, I've, I've gone back and I tried to analyze that and say, how could I have answered like that? <laughs> how? What possibly could have made me say that? Yeah. I look back at it and I think about when I truly did consider what I wanted to be. First, it was a doctor. Right. And then, and then I realized I don't I couldn't take the sight of blood. You know, I was still right. young, you know, so that, I, that's going to hold you back. I'm, I'm no physician, right. but I'm guessing that's going to hold you back. <laughs> right, right. And I think, Hey, if I don't like, to, if I can't stand the sight of blood, I have to overcome that. So forget it. I won't be a doctor. And then from that, it was policemen. Okay. But then as I got older, I realized, no, I don't want to put people in jail. <laughs> right. You're right. Okay. No matter what they do, I don't want to be the guy who puts them in jail. You know, as you get older, you learn a few, a little bit more. And then I came up with the concept of just being um, 
a business person. Yeah. And I envision mm -hmm. just, you know, living a good life, helping people in a business suit and come to, I, I did that. I conquered that. I achieved yeah. that, that, yeah. that, that, that vision. But what I realized, Graham, I didn't dream big enough. Right. Right. I didn't dream big enough. I mean, I'm writing today from my, from my heart and my spirit, and I should have, in, in hindsight, stayed focused on that from when it really hit me to start writing. But I didn't, and I'm fortunate enough to say that I can do it now. I'm still alive, I'm still moving forward, I'm still strong, I'm still positive, even more positive in my older age. So what age did you start writing, if that's not too impolite a question? No, no, no. Uh, around, I'd say around 16, junior high school, okay. uh, 14, 14 or so. I was a co-editor of my school newspaper my, in right. junior high school. Yeah. So that's, uh, obviously I was writing a little bit earlier, but I became the co-editor of my, my junior high school newspaper. Yeah. And from that point, I realized that I could write, and I knew that writing required having volume. So I just continued to write. Yeah. And you had a column in your local newspaper eventually, didn't you? That was quite yes. successful. Tell me about that. Yes. I was a real estate broker at the time. Yeah. And I had a insurance broker's license as well. But being in real estate and knowing I could write, I would create stories in, in a different aspect of the, of the column about the house and, and, and weave a tale around it. And then the others were, it was a question answer column where readers would actually send in uh, questions that they would have about certain topics pertaining to buying their first home. Right, right. So you were helping people all the way right through. You all fulfilled what you said through. you wanted to do when you were six years old. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, what a revelation. I come to that. What a revelation. Okay, well, tell me about this book, Overthinking. We all overthink. And I, I came to this understanding from my research in doing the book. I want to write novels eventually because I have a stack of a volume of, of material to write from. And I've come to also realize that all of us have a story. Every yeah. one of us has a story. We just need to have it put down on paper for someone to translate it and put it out there. But my story evolved around, I think, too much. And then when I was looking for a topic in my research, I saw something about overthinking. And I said, wait a minute. That clicked for me because I think all the time and I know I overthink. So I did my research and I fell in love with it. But there was a thing about the research I found that people generally didn't understand what overthinking really, really comes from. Mm -hmm. So I did enough research to find out overthinking is a natural function of our thinking. It's inherent to overthink. Is, um, is overthinking a way of surviving and dealing with the, the, the many things we're bombarded with and then go, well, wait, before I make this decision, I better just think about all the different consequences? Well, that's part of the, the, the book. That's part of the question or that's part of the, the, the thesis about the whole thing in reading the book. Yeah. You can find that out for each individual because overthinking in and of itself is not bad. Right, right. But... But it can be if you have a social illness, uh, a, a mood disorder. If yeah. you know, if you know that you know you're thinking about something because you, you're worried and and so forth. Overthinking can can harm you. Yeah. But if you know about the overthinking as something that's a natural function, you have yes. a better look on it. You have yeah. a better understanding of it, and it doesn't have to hurt you as much as you may think. To say, oh, right. I'm overthinking this. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it's worth recognizing that you're over, when you're in there, because if it's such a natural thing in a state of being, right. if you don't recognize, once you recognize it, you could go, yeah, I am kind of overthinking this, and you can pull it right. back a little bit. To exactly. A more, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I want to bring out, you know, after doing the research in the book. I didn't want it to, to appear that, 
Hey, you're stressed because you're overthinking. Hey, you're worried because you're overthinking. Yeah. No, your overthinking comes from a natural function. Now identify it so that you could reduce your stress. Or yes. maybe you have needless worry because worry is a needless thing. Yeah. Worry in and of itself is just totally needless. Yeah. Yeah. We don't the, need worry. The, the, the old joke is like 99% of the things we worry about never happen, which proves exactly. that worry, which proves that worrying works. Exactly. Now that's a joke, obviously. Exactly. But yeah, if you think about the things you worry about, they, do, they just, just never happen. Most of them never they happen. They never, and there's no answer to it. No. Worry is a, is, is a dog chasing its tail. I mean, completely. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to just bring that out. In, in, yeah. in my writing and 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 help people to see that pay attention to these things because you don't need them those things are cl clogging your brain they're wasting your time and you don't yeah. have to of yeah. course we're going to worry about certain things because it's natural but is the worrying necessary that's and what is I it helping yeah and is it helping yeah. so if you yeah. know about this more so i believe you'll reduce your worry i know it works for me yeah i don't worry as much as i used to worry put it that yeah. way yeah so you've talked about the research for the book how do you go about researching a book like this well you read other books of course you know on, okay. the, on the topic on the subject yeah. matter and yeah. then you continue to read until you get your you, you know you in your outline you form the the questions that you have the answers that you're looking for and how yeah. would you like to formulate you know your main focus where you want to go with it yeah and by yeah. doing that you you, you find you know other works that talk to you about it and th there's your research there's your work there's your foundation to move forward yeah so did you find yourself agreeing and disagreeing with people who've written books about this subject then and then just taking the bits that you agreed with and then writing them in your own style is that how it works well no i wrote i wrote about their their points of view as well okay but then i extrapolate from that where yeah. I thought that they were going off into a tangent on this thing about overthinking being harmful. Right. It, right. It, yeah. can, it can be harmful, but it should yeah. be given, overthinking should be given with, uh, I don't want to say a grain of salt, but it should be given a little, a little tempered, like, you know, not yeah, so a bit of perspective. Course. Yeah. Yes. Because, a bit of perspective. Right. Right. Yeah. You know that yeah. hey, we overthink, but is this overthinking bad? Is yeah. this overthinking good? Because I also look at overthinking as a positive thing. You yeah. can use it to to its advantage. You yeah, know, because it it can be a, t a creative thing, can't it? If you're thinking It is. Right. Yeah. You need to go past the boundaries to yeah. learn more. Yeah. If you don't, then you stop at the door. Yeah. You need to overthink or you need to you know, if, if I can use the word, you need to overthink in certain situations till you find the right answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like solve a math math equation. That's overthinking. Is it? it you, of course it is, yeah, because you, you have to, to think point. of all the possibilities, you yeah, to, yeah. You have to consider all variables and you can't yeah. do that if you don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't pop up, you know? <laughs> I mean, it can pop up too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you want to succeed, you want to be successful, what do you do? You think. Yeah, yeah. And you overthink. Yeah. But have the but have the, the focus on what you're overthinking about to, yeah. to achieve, to reach that goal that you're looking for. And overthinking why does, has advantages. Why does the title of the book have a question mark? Because I've realized that in society, the question exists. Am I overthinking this? Are you overthinking this? Hey, could he be overthinking? It's universal. Yeah. Overthinking in itself is a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. What am I thinking? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> it's yeah. universal. We're and of course, ourselves the, all the time. And of course, the one that is really dangerous is like, what is he thinking? You right, know, you focus that on you, someone else. Yeah, right. and you're reacting to what you think. It's it's think like when you get think. when somebody uh, to be blunt, when somebody right. pisses you off, it's right. not what they said. 
It's why you thought they said it. And if you've over if you've overthunk it, overthunk or if you, it, right? Yeah, and he hasn't thought that at all. It, it, and this is why we get yeah. So this is that's where that's where it can be dangerous, can't it? Yeah. In my book, in the Confessions of an Overthinker, yeah, I've given three scenarios, and in one of them, that's exactly what I tell you about. Right. I okay. You, I share with you exactly how that becomes demonstrative against the other person because yeah. you overthought and yeah. you you overthought to the point where you started giving that person dialogue to fit your picture yeah yeah overthought the situation yeah and it became yeah. bad yeah confessions yeah. of an overthinker and i know the bit you mean now yes right, now you yeah, yeah yeah it's all clicking yeah. into place here all clicking yeah, into yeah, place yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and this is a real life example. Mm, another all, one all you the mean. confessions are real life examples, but this one particularly, where the the gentleman just automatically assumed everything on the other person's side, and yeah. and totally got. This is this is the dealing with the plumber, isn't it? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, it's a that's great part of the book because it, was, it makes it and, real. It's a real life example. Yes, I think people can relate to life. that. This is a, yeah. Yes, everyone can. Yeah. Ten year relationship would have been just right down the tubes. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. if the guy didn't catch his overthinking. Yes. Yeah. And that happens all the time. That's why I say we need to look for things to help us. Yeah. Don't just settle for where you are or what you've gotten. Look for things. Seek it out. Yeah. There's a whole different uh, how can I say a whole different atmosphere when you start looking for answers or start searching. Yeah. Yeah. And so who is, is, is there anyone that the book is specifically aimed at? I mean, is the, is the chronic overthinker, are they, are they a typical type or is it just so, so broad? Everybody needs to, everybody can do more work on this. My research is, and, and in actual talking with, with people, with people really having this conversation, we all overthink. Some a little more than others, some a little less than others. I met a guy who said to me, oh, I never overthink. I didn't argue with him. <laughs> right. I accepted it. He said, yeah. oh, I never overthink. Now, there are some people that are that pointed. They do yeah. what is mandated to be done and it's over and okay you don't have to go anywhere okay. i believe that i truly okay. believe that because okay. in the realm in the scope of things there's got to be the the far end and the the the, the, the near end there has yeah. to be yeah so the parallels are there and when he said that it was the first time i heard someone say that to me oh i don't overthink <laughs> I had to think about it. I had you don't, to think about it. <laughs> you, you don't think maybe he just hadn't recognized it as overthinking. It's possible, but I yeah. do see, but I do see the, the 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 definitive part where someone could be that pointed. Okay. I okay. do see that. I accept that because yeah. in my thinking, in my own working, I'm trying to reach that level. Right. That I don't okay. have to overthink. Yeah. That I have the answer right there and I can keep moving forward. So yeah. in a sense, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that utopia, if you yeah. want to call it, and overthinking. Right. Right. So, so I where, I where can we find out more about you? Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, I am creating an author, an author's website. Right. Okay. Then, but that's not ready yet, but that, that'll be up No, soon. it's not ready yet. It's in the works. Okay. Yeah, and then once I develop that, I'll, you know, I'll go through the marketing pains of getting it out there. But that's where I'll be. And as I said, ultimately, my goal is to write novels and to write yes. novels about my own personal life. Yeah. Well, I hope that all happens soon, and I hope when you turn them into audio books, you think about a certain audio book narrator, obviously. <laughs> uh, but right now, the book to get, the audio book to download is Overthinking. And if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link in the description that takes you straight to Amazon where you can download the thing straight from there. And uh, you can start listening to the book Overthinking with a question mark by Brian Sp 
at Brian Scott Parker. And uh, yeah, it's just been uh, it's just been lovely talking to you and meeting you too. And I'm so pleased you're happy with how the audio book turned out. I I am thrilled. I am thrilled, Graham. You did a marvelous job. Simply marvelous. It's a wonderful book. It's so well written, and it's not overthought. <laughs> Thank you, Graham. <laughs>